Welcome to GreyPrimer.com. My name is Nick. I'm your host. And on today's episode, it's all about, come on, Zombicide Invader. So waiting for this one for quite some time. Uh, it's finally here. So this will be the first time I've unboxed a single player game, uh, which increases the chances I'm going to actually play it. Um, I'm hugging it here because I'm just so happy to finally have it in my arms. This is going to be one of my most anticipated games of the year. I've seen it demoed. I've seen it on the shelf. I've seen it previewed at UK Games Expo. Been a long wait to get this one into the house. So it's finally here. And without any more palaver, let's get stuck into it. Okay, folks. So here we go. Zombicide Invader. Uh, from Come On Games, Guillotine Games, and developed by, I would say their full names, but I'd probably not do well on their pronunciation, so I'll just go with their first names. Raphael, Jean-Baptiste, and Nicolas. Let's just get on with it, shall we? No more, no more blather out of me. So, here we go. You see our branding at the bottom. Uh, cool Mini or Not is now Come On. Uh, they have simplified their brand by the looks of things. Uh, guillotine or guillotine games have, um, similarly had a simplified sort of look to their branding. Um, and then the creators up top there. Some lovely cover art. Um, we've come to expect this from Zombicide Games. You get a full on, uh, diorama action cutscene or whatever. Um, some, some of these characters, though, are perhaps not as terrifying as they should be. Uh, there was a character in 2000 AD, uh, called Gr the Gronk, I think, or maybe just Gronk, who looked like a slightly less post-apocalyptic version of this guy. Uh, so, by all means, go Google 2000 AD Gronk, uh, to see what I mean. And I think you might find that this is what he did after being featured in the pages of the comic. <laughs> Probably. Um, so, oh, in here we have, or on the back, sorry, we have a list of contents. We are at the dawn of a new space age. Xenium, fuel, blah, 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 Xenos, alien species, believed to be peaceful. Infected like zombies. Nice way to get uh, zombies uh, into this game about battling space aliens. Have them all infected with some zombie plague. Uh, that's all of the minis you get. The game in mid-play. With uh, You can see the six-player dashes there. This is a game for one to six players. Uh, 14 plus takes about an hour. Uh, and there's the full... For any of you into branding, uh, Gating Games logo on the back there. There we are. And then, no longer Cool Mini or not, they are just Come On. Breakdown of all of it and some more information. Yeah! God, these are heavy. Wrestling with it. Here we go. So, oh, there is just a little bit more art. Let me just get rid of these mold tokens. A little bit more art on the side. We got Cole Hill. Cole Hill says, You're lucky I'm a nice guy. Captain Jared Connor who is suspiciously behind his 1980s sunglasses. To expect the best, prepare for the worst. And Dr. Vivian Rigby, with her nice assault rifle flamer combo. Some, I guess that weapon lives somewhere around District 9, crossed with aliens. Yeah, pretty cool. What about finding someone your size, babyface? What about fighting someone your size, babyface? I don't understand that. And we got a hunter. We got a tank. Look at that tank. Lovely. Tentacles blowing in the wind. Mid 
Mitsuki. And Mitsuki says, done. Here are the coordinates to the next objectives. I also hacked the drone. Okay. Sergeant Barack, not really a great quote to have on the box. Uh, Sergeant Baraka says, they're mindless drones. We are a family. And then Lieutenant or Lieutenant Magnus Berg says, dude, come on. Your face looks like my da da da. Fair enough. Oh, we got one more side. Hope you appreciate how heavy this is. Uh, we got our worker and then our spoiler abomination, who we shall refer to thus forth as a grunk. So, here are the tiles that I took out. This, when everywhere the abomination goes, leaves behind this mold. Um, the mold, when connected, I think, what are they, when connects between two spawn points, that's the game over. Um, if you want to stop that happening, you can flame it and it turns into this scorched earth kind of look. Um, when a room has been infected with mold or infected or, you know, has the scorch on it, it is no longer searchable. That's my understanding. And all of the stuff that was previously available in that room is no longer usable. That's my knowledge on it. Uh, we've got our magazine style rules and missions here. A nice sort of glossy magazine. Um, see what the artwork is like. You got a chapter of game components. More, more game components. Uh, protocol setup. What is this? Oh, cool. Little lap. Uh, let's see that. Zomb zombicide through space and time. That's nice. A little bit of history there. Zombicide. All right, more components set up. Overview, all the things. Um, Artwork-wise, not a huge amount in this. Oh, saying that, there's pretty cool Xeno there. Yeah, not, not a huge amount of artwork in this, um, certainly compared to the likes of the others. Uh, this is much more about, I think, much more about the actual gameplay and setup. Um, they haven't dedicated a huge amount of page space to art. Of course, I say that, and then there's an almost an entire page dedicated to that is, um, hmm, what are those ones called? They're not abominations, they're the other ones. Tanks? Yeah. Let's call them tanks. What that is that. Uh, nice, you know. It's soft back, but it does seem to be well bound and everything. Um, well made. Shiny. Let's remove this for now. These will be our minis. And then our final pieces. We have our game tiles. We have our all of our tokens and counters all ready to be punched out. Uh, and then kind of a nice feature inside this box. There's a little plastic corner protector. Which is a cool thing. And then these are plastic as well to hold everything in place and to keep the box from getting damaged. I really like that. I think that's a nice touch. Okay, let's have a look at the minis. Here we go. So, nice design on this. Usually these are what, like brown cardboard, aren't they? With the logo sort of printed onto them. But this is, this is, this is cool. Yeah. I mean, this is my first Zombicide, so maybe the miniatures boxes for the other versions of the Zombicide were, um, were like this as well. Had a bit of a, you know, a theme to them. But, beep, boop, boop, boop. 
Ooh. Oh, it's always the best bit, right? So, dice. Dice don't get talked about much. Usually just, ooh, here's some dice, and off to one side. But these are good. These are super clear to read, um, solidly made. You've got numbers on the six, numbers on the one, and all of the other sides. Um, so, really easy to read. I mean, the reason I said that about the six is because a lot of games don't have that anymore. They'll have some kind of special logo or something on where the six is. Uh, little pegs for marking where you are on your player dash. Like here. Oh, and then colored rings for um, designating who is who. And we have the deck of cards, uh, mini cards here, uh, with guns and all of the things. These dashboards are solid plastic, beautifully put together, will last for many, many years. Uh, the only thing that will probably go on them are these little markers here, uh, but I think they seem pretty solidly made to me. Um, and very easy to move. I had heard some things about these being sticky, but oh, that's absolutely fine. There are no issues there. On top of that are the uh, main hero cards uh, with specs um, and the same sort of artwork we've seen on the box. I like the little pulse thing on here. Saying that doesn't stick, but does that go further than that? I don't know if it does on that one, but... Oh yeah, it does. It was just, I think, snagged on the one beneath it. So yeah. Perfecto. Uh, logo, the standard Zombicide logo is marked here. You've got a little fist for what's in that hand and another fist for what's in that hand. Then you have your clothing or armor on either side here. In the middle, I'm not sure what that logo is. Maybe a backpack? Is it a backpack? I think it could be. So things in your backpack, things on your body. Things in either of your hands and who you are in the middle. Uh, what drew me to Zombicide Invader was that for weapons which require power cell, you actually put the weapon card here and the power cell goes sideways in here, like you're actually plugging a power cell into it. A, a, a power cell, not a parasol. Um, I just thought that was such a cool little touch. A real feeling like you were just sort of plugging it in. Why you would plug a parasol into your assault rifle is beyond me. Um, but you never know. I've seen some weirder weapons than that crafted in Dead Rising and the like. But let's have a look at the minis. So underneath there, you've got a further six rows of these nine mini designs that are also featured here on this front case. So we're just going to look at those. Uh, we'll just pop this out of the way. So let's see what we got. Heroes first or aliens first? Uh, alien. Ah, uh, no, heroes. We'll go heroes. Okay. Uh, so this was the one with the 80 sunglasses, the mirror shades. Uh, not a huge amount of detail on the face, but then I think that's because most of this is taken up by these huge sunglasses. Um, I guess this is a shock stick, something like that. And then our backpack, looks like an SMG. Yeah, pretty good. Hero number two. Oh, that's cool. Like in the detail on the weapon, the weapon has some kind of a swing arm um, support system here. Very much like the larger uh, weapon from Aliens that uh, Drake and I think Vasquez, Vasquez uh, carried around. So that's kind of neat. Uh, big ammo 
compartment here underneath. And is that... I'm seeing two barrels, so I'm imagining maybe is this like a... I don't know. Like assault rifle rounds here. They're big if they are. Um, and then shotgun cartridges on a magazine. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be options for, for that weapon in the game that will um, give me an idea of what those actually are. Uh, but cool, nonetheless. And decent armor across the body. Um, it kind of looks like his uh, trouser leg is pulled up here a little bit. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's a trouser leg, his body armor. Per man. Who we got? Come on, focus. Oh, cool. Um, larger version of that SMG from before. Oh, just did like a just a different layout. Um, neither of them are bullpup. No, they're just standard. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Just a different grip. And similar sort of armor, same backpacks. A pretty cool looking mini. I like the sort of forward motion here with the leg kinked up there. Liam will have. Ah, nice. Dual wielding pistols, thigh holsters. Pretty cool. I even like the the jacket slightly open here. That's very cool. Yeah. And there's something about the, the head pointing off to the other side that's that just makes it a bit more interesting to look at. A um, bit of light facial hair there. But yeah, I like that. I like the folds in the jacket as well, sort of the, the ripples across the, the fabric at the back. Now we have our combo weapon, our District 9 stroke aliens weapon. It looks like a Kalashnikov sort of core there, I guess. And then, yeah, that looks like an AK. I'd say up to about that point, kind of. And then whatever this fuel cell or maybe liquid fuel. That definitely looks like something that would ignite if, you know, have a pilot light running there. So I guess that feeds there. I don't know why we're talking about the weapons in such detail, but they're just kind of interesting. For me, anyway. You may have tuned out five minutes ago. But, um, groovy hairdo. Um, like in the, the perm. Um, again, thigh holster here for a pistol and uh, much lighter armor. If any armor, actually. It looks more like a sort of a flight suit rather than armor there on that one. And then the final of our humanoid heroes. Uh, ooh, is that a medic pack on the back? First aid kit. That does not look like a standard weapon. That looks like something exotic. And then some kind of a bolter pistol here. You know, so maybe these are energy weapons. Um, or if this is a medic character, then maybe uh, there's something in that too. Or what was it? There was something about running a... Was it a bypass or something? So is this like a, a hacker sort of tech character? So this could be her, her box of tricks um, at the back here. But um, some body armor, some uh, knee pads and... Um, Shin pads there and stuff. Uh, lighter sort of sneakers. They paint up quite well as Converse, I'd say. Other brands of sneakers are available. Yeah. Six pretty cool heroes there. And then we've got our sentry gun, which is here. It's like a rail gun sort of opening. But, um,. Yeah, obviously automated. It's like sort of pneumatic system, maybe folds into itself. Um, I don't see any 
um, ammunition source there, but it, it could be, I guess, a, an energy weapon. And it, it, certainly there's, there's cooling systems here along the barrel uh, for venting, um, vents at the back. Yeah, so it could be an energy weapon or a laser or something cool like that. Uh, kind of bland design, but then I guess if it's a automated sentry unit, it doesn't need to be fancy. And then we have our walking around and killing everything at seas kind of dude. A uh, huge uh, machine gun here, light machine gun or um, support right uh, support weapon. What's it called? A uh, support automatic weapon? Is that is that kind of what we're talking about here? Um, belt fed. Goes back into this cool drum that's hidden just underneath the backpack. Uh, so I'm not sure what the capacity on that is, but I imagine substantial. Um, certainly no problem for this uh, walker type to uh, carry around that kind of weight. Um, and cleverly, they've got a lot of pouches in the back here. So for carrying stuff to, to you know, support um, packs for the squad. Rather than them carrying them around, hiking everything around with them. You know, you could have spare ammo and med kits and, and rations and, and whatever else you need. Comms equipment shoved into these pouches and this this uh, big yoke can just carry it around. No bother on them. Um, I do like the, the, the sort of menacing claw. Sorry for focus there. The menacing claw hand. That just is uh, very good. And the actual... I guess that's some kind of uh, optics array. Oh, and my favorite number, 23. But uh, some kind of optics array here, maybe for different uh, wavelengths of light, redundancy systems, things like that. I like that. That's a cool mini. Uh, so let's get into the monsters. So this is one of our tanks. Let's look at both tanks together. Yeah. Lots of tentacles. Lots of, um... Gooeyness. Good muscle tone. Um... Yeah, regular arms here, tentacles. Um, sort of Cthulhu-esque look to them. Interesting skull indentation there. Or is that a constant? Yeah, it looks like that's part of the, the race or whatever this is. Uh, so these are the Xenos who've become infected, and these are the larger sort of tank creatures. Um, I will grab one of the standard foot soldiers to show you the, the scale of the two of them against each other. So not much bigger, but just, just kind of chunkier. No, sorry, not much taller, um, but just sort of a chunkier version. Um, larger face sort of tentacles here. Uh, <laughs> you got more face tentacles. So tentacle beard, um, longer tentacle beard. Uh, and then let's look at one of the standard boyos. Um, uh, kind of a feel of swamp thing about him. Him or her. Or they. It is... Nice enough looking mini. Um, pretty... Standard, I guess? No, standard isn't the best word for it, but... Um... They're okay. There's not a huge amount going on there. The actual finish of the minis here is very good. There, there's very little work to do on them. There's a little bit of flash there uh, around the hands and stuff, but um, they would not take a long time to get ready. I mean, that's what I love about these sets with the pre-built minis is the quality is so high in the uh, the sculpt and the mold that you don't feel like you have to do work on them before you put them out and play with them. They are ready to rock as they are. 
And the fact that they're color coded as well, the the grey hero characters, the this sort of tan um Xeno character. Uh, actually a really good um pose there with that one. That's very cool. I like that one actually. Tentacles are slightly longer and sort of wrap around the body. Um I like that. That one's nice. It's the first one of those ones that I've actually liked. Um, this one, there's a tentacle going down here into the arm, which is interesting. And again, a pretty nice pose. There's a nice sort of a movement and a, a dynamic feel to that. So that's all of the, the standard ones and the tank. And then these are the hunters. Uh, they've got these very cool face tentacles, um, sort of pointing the direction they're running. I wonder, do they have limited eyesight? Are they using these to, to sort of feel their way? Certainly the, the eyes are not clear. Well, maybe they are. Well, maybe they use these uh, like a cat uses its whiskers to sort of feel its environment around it. Um, but I'm taking it from the, the sort of the, the stance here that these boys move with speed. And here is the other one of those type. Not massively different. A little bit of um, detail on the base there, which is nice to see. Cool. Not a, not a huge, I mean, not that they're badly sculpted or molded, but there's, there's not a huge amount of stuff going on in those, um, the hunters or the standard dudes, whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, cool. Some of them are, are better than others there, I think. Oh, Gronk. Oh, look at that face. I know he's, he's supposed to strike fear into your heart, but all I can imagine him is making like a kind of noise as he gronks his way through the world, or the underworld. Um, cool tentacles, though, you know. His uh, goofy face aside, these are very cool tentacles. Great muscle tone on the back there. I'm kind of hoping those aren't eyes looking back at us. Um, yeah, I like this. I love the ways th these are kind of emerging out from the skin. Ah, that's cool. Not sure about the barnacle nappy though, or diaper. <laughs> Is that just me or does that look like he's wearing a nappy? Uh, a, a diaper to our North American viewers. So we've got the gronky goofy face and the diaper. Hmm. But still, still cool. I still like it, because the tentacles are awesome. But that's it. That's Invader, uh, Zombicide Invader. I absolutely love all of the components there. Um, some of the Xeno minis, a um, little bit bland, but uh, the heroes, I think, more than make up for it. The chances of me playing this are probably pretty high, because it's got a one-player option which I really appreciate, especially being out here in the, the countryside where I don't have gamers around me. Uh, I appreciate that it's there. I appreciate that I don't have to pay for an additional expansion uh, to play one player. It's all just in the, the core box. And yeah, I, I'll, I'll give this a go for sure. So listen, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something from that. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notifications bell. All of those things. Uh, check out our merchandise store at greyprimer.com. If you're uh, looking to purchase some stuff, you can go down to our Wayland Games link down below. And if you get something from there, I get a small kickback. You get the standard discount on the store. And it helps me to keep the channel uh, and everything else going. Uh, next time on greyprimer.com, we have my hobby kits for traveling. Um, so the small kits that I've built up to allow me to take the, the bare essentials with me when I go to expos and cons 
um, or when I'm just going into like a friend's house or into town or something like that to, to do a little bit of painting or a little bit of mini building where I don't want to take everything with me. I just want those, those bare essentials. I want them in a container that's secure. So like if I need a wet palette with me, it's not going to leak over everything, but that's next time on grayprimer.com. Uh, for now, I will say thank you and take care. Bye-bye.